Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to this 10th uh, lecture and the last lecture of this module of this course called uh, Game Theory and Economics. Uh, before we start, uh, let us re recapitulate what we have done in the previous class or previous lecture. Um, we have been doing some applications of weak domination and the uh, uh, last lecture uh, <coughs> deliberated on one particular case of collective decision making. Uh, the story is the following that suppose there are n number of players. So, n players who are, who are trying to take a common decision, a common policy and this policy uh, may be it can be the expenditure of this community uh, can be represented by a number. Suppose that number is x. Now, this community is trying to take this decision as to what x to choose and everyone uh, of this n players uh, has a favorite policy and suppose for player i that favorite policy of that player is x i star. Now, uh, the question is how this community arrives at this common policy x. And the mechanism here is the following that uh, everyone is asked to announce uh, a particular number <coughs> and the median of all these numbers is taken to be the policy of the community. So, that is the mechanism uh, through which the this n players or this community is arrives at uh, the common decision or collective decision. And the result of this uh, one result of this <coughs> of this exercise is that if everybody is asked to give uh, his or her number, then giving x i star weakly dominates over any other action in the sense that any player can announce any number, but if that person announces his actual the real favorite policy then that action is weakly better or weakly dominant over other possible numbers that he can announce and uh, that is the proof that we have done in the previous lecture. Uh, so, related to this exercise uh, we can take other short exercises. For example, can there be an equilibrium where the policy is the median favorite policy? So, in other words, in this group everyone has a favorite policy, suppose x 1 star, x 2 star, etcetera, etcetera and last is suppose x n star and uh, they have this x 1 star, x 2 star, etcetera, etcetera, they have been arranged in an ascending order and in the middle there is one x m star which is the middlemost x or middlemost x star. And this is the what we are calling as the median favorite policy. Now, question is can there be an equilibrium uh, where in the equilibrium the choice of the community or the collective decision of the community is exactly this x m star. And uh, yes, there can be many such equilibria. One is that 
uh, one Nash equilibrium, example of one Nash equilibrium is suppose everyone announces XM star. So, it is like this the actions are the following XM star XM star dot 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 XM star. Now, in this case everyone is announcing this XM star. So, the median of all these numbers is in fact XM star this is the median. So, this will be the chosen policy of the community. Question is, is this a Nash equilibrium? To check whether this is a Nash equilibrium, what I have to check is that if someone deviates, can he or she be better off? Now, uh, if for example, player 1 deviates. Now, even if he deviates, uh, he cannot change the policy because uh, there are other players in the group. If he is taking some other, uh, he is announcing something else, suppose x1, but the other things remain as they are. And the median of all these numbers is again xm star. So, by announcing some other number other than XM star, no player can change the outcome, the policy of the group. And uh, if he cannot change the policy of the group, his payoff cannot be better. It is same as, uh, as it was when he was announcing XM star. So, by changing my behavior, changing my action, uh, I am not better off. I am as happy as I was when I was announcing XM star. So, this is therefore a Nash equilibrium. One can think of other Nash equilibrium, Nash equilibrium also where the policy of the community is in fact uh, XM star. For example, suppose everyone is announcing his or her favorite policy. So, this is x1 star, x2 star, xn star. In this case also you see the median is again xm star, right. And uh, no player can be better off by changing his or her policy because as we have just seen that announcing your favorite policy is in fact the weekly dominant action it dominates over all other actions. So, by changing my policy I cannot be better off. So, this is again a Nash equilibrium. And the answer is again yes. And uh, I can give the following example. Suppose everyone is announcing a particular number which is not XM star, uh, then that is the Nash equilibrium. For example, suppose everyone is announcing uh, X, X bar, suppose, where X bar is not equal to xm star. Then this is a Nash equilibrium. Why this is a Nash equilibrium is like as we have seen just now that by changing the action, no player can change the outcome of the uh, of this game because other players are taking the action x bar. If other players are taking the action x bar, I do something else, the medium remains at x bar. So, if the median remains at x bar, uh, my payoff remains the same as I was getting by announcing x bar. Uh, so, therefore, this is again a Nash equilibrium. 
Now notice here uh, the fact that I am changing my action, other players are taking the same action, therefore the median remains the same is crucially dependent on the fact that n, the number of players uh, is greater than 2. Well, how do I know that n is greater than 2? Firstly, I definitely know that n is not equal to 1. Uh, because had it been a one person game, it would not have been a game. It, uh, the game has to be a case where there is interaction between players. So, n is 1 is not a game. n cannot be 2 either because if n is equal to 2 then n is odd, uh, sorry n is even which we have seen is not the case. Uh, in our case, n is odd. Then 3 people are t announcing the same number, if someone announces something else, the median remains uh, the same. So, that is crucial. Okay. <clears throat> now, this was one case of collective decision making where people were making their announcement, their x i's and the median of these x i's were taken to be the policy. What about mean? Suppose people make their announcement x1, x2, xn and the mean of them that is this is the policy. Uh, so, so we have a separate mechanism now which is not the mechanism that we had before. In this case, uh, is it still the, is it still true that people will find announcing their favorite policy weekly dominates over uh, announcing something else. So, that is more or less uh, about this section called dominant uh, and dominated actions. <coughs> The next topic that we shall cover today is symmetric games and symmetric equilibrium. <coughs> now, before we introduce this topic, uh, let us remember uh, how we have visualized games as such. Uh, we have visualized, suppose we are talking about two, a two player game. We have visualized a two player game as the following that uh, there are two populations, two distinct populations and uh, in a particular play of the game, one person from each group is randomly picked up and these two people randomly picked up play a game with each other. And since these people have some previous knowledge about how the game is being played, they uh, have a belief regarding other pe people's action, other players action and from that belief they play their best action, best possible action. So, that is the story, that is how we uh, visualize this idea of games. <coughs> In symmetric games, it is not the case that people come from two different populations. So, they come from the single population. Now, if they come from the single population, then the specification uh, has to be modified uh, accordingly. Uh, in particular, there will be two changes. One, the action sets must be the same. So, the players who are playing with each other, we shall uh, assume that there are two players. These two players who are playing with each other, they have the same action set. So, A1 is the action set of the first player suppose, it must be equal to A2. Number of actions are the same, the actions, the name of the actions are also the same. And secondly, <coughs> Remember, they come from the same population. 
So, it must happen that uh, if I take a particular action and other pre player take some other action, then the payoff that I get will be just should be the same. If the other player takes my action and uh, I take his action and what is the payoff that he is getting out of it, these two payoffs must be the same. So, uh, it is written as the following. So, on the left hand side I have u1, u1, u, a1, a2 which is the payoff player 1 gets if player 1 takes action a1 and player 2 takes action a2. Now, since the players are indistinguishable, they come from the same population, they have the same preferences, same actions, that payoff must be the same as player 2 gets, uh, sorry this is wrong. player 2 gets if player 2 plays a1 and player 1 plays a2. So, that is what must also happen. So, this second characteristic is basically uh, emphasizing the fact that the identity of players do not matter, uh, the combination of the uh, actions if they are the same, uh, then the payoffs to the two players must also be the same. Uh, so, now from this we get the following that suppose a1 is equal to a2, which means that player 1 and player 2 are taking the same action, then it must happen that right. So, which means that uh, uh, if the actions of the two players are the same, then the payoffs that they are getting must also be, also be the same. So, uh, I can combine these two characteristics in the following way. Suppose this is action A, this is action B, player 2 must also have the same actions and suppose this is x, then this also must be x because here the actions are same. If this is y, then this also must be y. Okay. Now, if suppose this is z, if player 1 is taking action a, player 2 is action, taking action b, then player 1 is getting z. That payoff should must accrue to player 2. If he takes action A and player 1 takes action B. And similarly, this number also must be the same number. Uh, the payoff that player 1 gets by playing B when player 2 is playing A must be same as uh, the payoff that player 2 gets when he plays K, sorry, he plays B and 1 plus A. So, this is the general structure of a uh, symmetric game, not a general structure, but an example. Uh, why I say that this is not a general structure? Because there are there can be more than two actions for each player. Now, uh, from this it is uh, obvious that in many of the games that we have studied, we have basically studied symmetric games. Uh, for example, prisoner's dilemma. If you remember the structure, So, this is the structure of a prison dilemma game 
and you, we can easily verify that this is a basically symmetric game because uh, when NCNC is played the payoffs that players are getting are equal. If CC is being played again the same thing is happening the payoffs that the players are getting one each they are again equal. Uh, when the actions are different for example player 1 is playing NC player 2 is playing C uh, then player 1 is getting 0 that 0 must accrue to player 2 when player 2 is playing NC this and player 1 is playing C. So, this number is equal to this number this number is equal to this number. So, this is prisoner's dilemma and it is a symmetric game. Uh, what is not a symmetric game that we have studied? Well, there were many. <coughs> the simplest that uh, I can think of is suppose the battle of sexes. So, going to boxing match, going to opera. So, this was uh, a, a case of a game which is not a symmetric game, a non-symmetric game, uh, the battle of sexes game. Uh, player 1 has two actions uh, B and O going to boxing match and going to opera and likewise player 2 also has two actions B and O uh, and the payoffs were 2, 1, 0, 0, 1, 2. These were the payoffs. Now, uh, notice that as far as the as far as comparing BO and OB is concerned that is when player 1 is playing boxing match, player 2 is playing uh, opera, uh, pl the players are getting 0, 0 and if I compare that with OB, uh, that requirement is satisfied, the second requirement is satisfied. First requirement is also satisfied because they have the same action pairs. But if I consider this BB and OO, then this requirement is not satisfied that u uh, 1 of a a is equal to u 2 of a a that is not being satisfied. So, that is why it is not a symmetric game. Uh, so, that is more or less the definition of a symmetric game. So, the symmetric games are case cases where uh, the players are coming from the same population. Now, if players are coming from the same population then what is the notion of equilibrium that there can be? Remember when we talk about Nash equilibrium, the idea of Nash equilibrium that we have is that it is a it is a it is a vector of actions which is a steady state in the sense that given that the other players are playing their actions, I am not going to deviate and play something else, I am going to stick to my equilibrium action. Now, if it is the case that these players are coming from two different sets of populations, uh, then it is easy to distinguish between them. For example, the usual in the usual game, uh, there were two populations and people are coming from two, uh, these two populations, two players were chosen. Now, since I know that I belong to population 1 uh, and the other player is belonging to population 2, the action that population 2 people have been taking before that action is going to be repeated now and given that action I play my best action. So, that is the idea that I have a belief that what this population 2 people have been doing they will continue to do. And similarly, uh, if I belong to population 2 I will have a belief that whatever action population 1 people have been taking they will take the same action now and depending on that belief I will take my action and these two actions will again support each other. But if it is the case that suppose they come from the same population then there will be some problems here as far as the equilibria are concerned. For example, let us take the case of two populations first. Suppose A1 that is the action set of player 1 
and suppose Nash equilibrium is A1 B2. <coughs> Which means that if B2 is played, A1 is the best action for player 1, and if A1 is played, B2 is the best action for player 2. <coughs> uh, but if it is the case that instead of B1, B2, I know here you see here A1. I have taken A1, A2, A3 and B1 and B2. Uh, A and B are two different letters and I can clearly distinguish between them. But if I have a symmetric game, then I cannot say that these actions are B A1, A2 and A3 and B1 and B2. Then the action sets are same. And let us suppose the action set is A1 and suppose it to make it simple then can there be steady state at a1 a2 what is meant by can there be steady state at A1, A2 in the sense that can A1, A2 be a Nash equilibrium in a steady state sense uh, and the answer is no. Uh, in the sense because A1 and A2 are two different actions. Now and these two players are coming from the same population. If they are coming from the same population, so it will look like this. So this is the case and we are trying to figure out, we are trying to figure out whether this A1, A2, this combination is a Nash equilibrium. Now the problem is that A1 and A2 are such that these are the actions by player 1 and 2 and this 1 and 2 are coming from the same population. Now if they are coming from the same population, they cannot distinguish what action the other player will take. For example, when one goes to play the game, he does not know whether 2 is going to play A2. It may happen that 2 is going to play A1 thinking that 1 is going to play A2. Uh, in that case, it will be foolish for 1 to play A1. It will be best for him to play A2. On the other hand, if 2 indeed plays A2, it will be best for 1 to play A1. So there is a problem of identity here because uh, they are coming from the same population, their identities are not distinguishable and if the identity is not distinguishable, then in a steady state they cannot take separate actions. If they take separate actions, then that will not be sustainable because there will be confusion as to what action a particular player will take in the next play of the game like here. Similarly, it will happen for player 2 also. <coughs> If A1, A2 has been played in the previous game, then player 2 does not really know whether 1 will play, 1 will think himself as player 1 or 1 will think himself as player 2. If 1 thinks himself as player 1, he should have played 1, A1 and if 1 thinks himself as player 2, he should play A2. But here, uh, the I am just using 1 and 2 just for the sake of convenience of drawing this matrix. In reality, players cannot be uh, pigeonholed into player 1 and player 2 because they belong to the same population. So that is why in case of uh, symmetric games, such cases uh, of different actions by different players cannot be a steady state. So the only case of steady state there can be is that the actions are same. If the actions are same, it does not matter uh, as long as the other player is playing the same action. And this, uh, this will be 
true for every player every player will think that the other player will go, going to play the same action a so i should also play a and this becomes a nash equilibrium <coughs> So that is it, but uh, this kind of Nash equilibrium where each player is playing the same action in the Nash equilibrium uh, are often called symmetric Nash equilibrium with some additional qualification. So the qualification is that in a n player game with ordinal preference if action sets are the same then a Nash equilibrium in which all take the same action is called a symmetric Nash equilibrium. So, it looks like this A star A star dot 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 A star. So, this is the general form of a symmetric Nash equilibrium. But notice uh, when I have defined this Nash, symmetric Nash equilibrium, it is not necessary that uh, all the symmetric Nash equilibria occur only in symmetric games because symmetric games also satisfy the second criteria that we have talked about this second criteria second criterion and in this definition I have said nothing about this second criterion. So, a game can be non-symmetric but it can have a symmetric Nash equilibrium uh, this is one thing. And, and at the same time it is also true that any symmetric game uh, may have no symmetric Nash equilibrium. It may have a Nash equilibrium which is not a symmetric Nash equilibrium. So, that Nash equilibrium in that symmetric game cannot be a steady state uh, kind of uh, pair of actions. For example, let me take uh, one game of the following form. So, he has the actions A, B, similarly for him. <coughs> so, in this game, uh, is it a symmetric game? And the answer is yes, it is a symmetric game. How do I know? Because the action sets are same and uh, along this diagonal cells that is A, A, B, B, the payoffs of the players are matching with each other and thirdly uh, the payoff that player 1 gets by playing A, B is that is 1 is the payoff that player 2 gets when B, A is played this one. So, this number is the equal to this number, this number is equal to this number 
and we are having a symmetric game. However, which are the Nash equilibria here? There are two Nash equilibria here, one is A B, other is B A. And uh, one can easily see that none of them is a symmetric Nash equilibrium. In symmetric Nash equilibrium, the actions of the players must be the same actions. <coughs> Let me do uh, one exercise. The exercise is the following. Suppose I have a game as uh, follows. This is the game. <coughs> Question is, what are the Nash equilibria of the game? And secondly, which of the equilibria, if any, correspond to a steady state if the game models pairwise interaction between the members of a single population. So, uh, if there is any Nash equilibrium in this game and if there are more than uh, more than one, uh, then of those Nash equilibria can anyone can can any Nash equilibrium be thought of as a steady state outcome. <coughs> uh, steady state outcome of players who belong to the same population. The firstly, which are the Nash equilibria? Uh, by examining this game, uh, it is uh, easy to figure out that A A is a Nash equilibrium, all right? Because if player 2 is taking the action A, uh, then player 1 by taking some other action other than A cannot be better off. And similarly for player 2, so A is a Nash equilibrium. Uh, which are the other Nash equilibria, if there is any other Nash equilibria? A C is a candidate, because if player 2 is playing C, player 1 by deviating by playing B, he is getting 3, by C he is getting 0, whereas by playing A, he is getting 4. From player 2's point of view, if player 1 is playing A, uh, by playing A, player 2 gets 1, by playing B, player 1 gets, uh, player 2 gets 1, which is not greater than 1. So, A is a Nash equilibrium and similarly, C A is also a Nash equilibrium, we can check. In fact, this game is a symmetric game, we can see it very clearly because along this diagonal, along this uh, A, A, B, B, C, C diagonal, the payoffs of the players, two players are the same. And uh, for the elements which are not on the diagonal, for the cells which are not on the diagonal, uh, <coughs> the payoff of player 1 uh, from playing B A is equal to the payoff that player 2 gets if A B is split. Uh, so, and this applies to all these cells. <coughs> so, these are the Nash equilibria. Now, uh, which of them is or are symmetric? And uh, obviously, the symmetric Nash equilibrium It is just one which is A A, because in symmetric Nash equilibrium uh, 
we know that the actions of the players must be the same. They must match with each other. And that is what it is being asked, they, though they have not uh, used the word uh, symmetric Nash equilibrium, they have said that which of the equilibria if any correspond to a steady state if the game models pairwise interaction between the members of a single population. So, uh, we have already fig figured out that if it has to be a steady state between the members of a single population, that steady state has to be a symmetric equilibrium, that is how it is defined. And in a symmetric equilibrium, the actions must be the same. So, A A is that equilibrium, A C and C A are not symmetric equilibrium and therefore, is not a steady state. So, the, that is more or less it, uh, this module of Nash equilibrium, what we have discussed in this module, uh, let me just go over it. I am trying to be brief. So, this is a recapitulation of module 1. Sorry, this is module 2. So, we have started out by giving uh, the definition of a game. We have seen that there are three elements of a game, uh, one is the set of players, two is the action set of each player and third is the preferences of each uh, of, the, of the players. So, that uh, has to be mentioned, that has to be specified. And uh, secondly, <coughs> then we have uh, given many examples of games, we have talked about the games called uh, prisoner's dilemma. We have talked about we have talked about battle of sex sexes. Matching pennies. and stack hunt. Uh, though uh, these names are quite exotic and each of them has a story behind it, but it is not as such this particular stories that uh, interest us to games. Uh, basically these models, uh, this prison system or battle of sexes, they are generic situations in the sense that they can be applied to a lot of real life uh, cases. <clears throat> and uh, after showing this uh, different sorts of usual games that are studied, we have then defined what is a Nash equilibrium. We have said that a Nash equilibrium is a, is a action profile where <coughs> Given the actions of other players, no player can deviate and uh, be better off. So, what is known as unilateral deviation is unprofitable. Uh, a player can be uh, as happy as he was in a Nash equilibrium if he deviates, but he can never be better off. So, it is like this. this must be the, uh, this must be satisfied. <coughs> uh, after defining Nash equilibrium, uh, we have tried to figure out what are the Nash equilibria of the games that we have discussed. For example, in prisoner's dilemma, we have seen that the Nash equilibrium is at the case where both the prisoners are confessing. And that we have said is a Nash equilibrium, is a situation which is not a very efficient situation. Uh, in the situation, in the sense that both of them could have not confessed and uh, both of them 
would could have earned a better payoff. Uh, which basically means that if we have an equilibrium, a Nash equilibrium, it is not necessarily an efficient situation. One, can, both of them, both the players can be better off by doing something else. But that something else may not be a Nash equilibrium. <coughs> so, prisoner's dilemma basically a generic case for that that the equilibrium is not efficient. Stag hunt. If I talk about stag hunt, <coughs> here we have a situation where there are two Nash equilibria. So, Nash equilibrium it is not necessary that a game only has uh, one Nash equilibrium, there might be two Nash equilibria and uh, one of the Nash equilibria could be better for both the players than the other. So, by the very fact that we are talking about equilibrium, again we are not reaching the best situation for the players. Uh, one can have a very efficient equilibrium and one can have a equilibrium which is not efficient. That is what we saw in Stagant. Battle of sexes tell us the story of the players uh, see that they can cooperate and be better off. For example, both of them taking the same action is good for both of them. But they differ whether which combination of actions is better. Uh, so, it might happen that one of the players is choosing, is liking the action AA over the action BB, whereas the second player is liking BB over the action AA. So, that is the case of battle of sexes. Uh, again, in battles of sexes also there can be multiple Nash equilibria. And then we talked about matching pennies where there is no Nash equilibrium at all. In the sense that, in the sense that we have defined Nash equilibrium, that uh, Nash equilibrium may not exist uh, in many cases. And then we said that in in each of these games that we have discussed, one characteristic is that the the, the action set of the players uh, co consisted of finite number of actions. In particular, we had only talked about two or three actions for each player, but that is not a general case obviously. It may happen that actions are infinite in number, <coughs> there can be continuous actions. In the, those cases, this technique <coughs> of just looking at an action profile and try to see whether people can deviate be, and be better off may not work. So, for continuous uh, actions, one can, uh, one should have a better way of finding out Nash equilibrium and that is what we have done by taking the help of best response functions. So, we have defined what is known as best response function. Uh, best response function of a player is the, uh, is the functional relationship between what action maximizes his payoff given the actions of other players. So, uh, this is how best response functions are defined and we have shown that a Nash equilibrium is a situation where the actions belong to the best response functions of each player. Uh, so, if I have that result then it becomes easy to find a, find a Nash equilibrium or Nash equilibria. If I have two players, I construct their best response functions and I can have uh, continuous actions that is not a problem. And by constructing these two best response functions, I get two equations, I find out what is the intersection point uh, or points. And at the intersection point or points, I have Nash equilibrium. And then we have talked about dominated actions. We have said that there are two sorts of domination, one is weak domination and other is the strong domination and there are some uh, properties that they satisfy. For example, in Nash equilibrium, uh, strong dominated actions are not played. If we talk about weak dominated action, weakly dominated actions, well they are played in Nash equilibrium, but those Nash equilibria where they are played should not be strict Nash equilibria. Uh, in strict Nash equilibria, weakly dominated action is not played. 
and finally we talked about symmetric games and equilibria which is the case where people come from the sim single population in general when you talk about games and Nash equilibria the players that we consider they come from different population groups they are randomly picked up from different population groups and they play their games but in sy symmetric games uh, the players come from the single population group which means that their preferences are similar their action sets are similar we have uh, looked at those games how they are defined and what is known as symmetric Nash equilibria that also we have defined in the next uh, lecture we shall be starting with module 3 uh, see you there thank you define a symmetric strategic game with two players symmetric strategic game with two players two properties it has to satisfy a action sets of players must be same same action sets for players b if This must also hold that for player 1, if he plays a 1 and the other player plays a 2, that will give him the payoff which will the payoff that which will be the payoff that player 2 will get if player 2 plays a 1 and player 1 plays a 2. Second question define symmetric Nash equilibrium. So, symmetric Nash equilibrium. In a strategic game, if players have same action sets, then an action profile is symmetric Nash equilibrium. if it is a Nash equilibrium and a i star is same for all players. So, for all players uh, the, the, the actions that they are taking is the same action. Uh, remember the action sets are same. So, uh, the, the co actions will be common to everyone. Now, if they are taking the exactly same action and if that action profile is a Nash equilibrium, then we call that Nash equilibrium action profile as a symmetric Nash equilibrium. Third question, in the following game which are the Nash equilibria and which are the symmetric Nash equilibria? Now, we can see from this game itself, what are the Nash equilibria in this game. In fact, all action profiles here are uh, Nash equilibrium action profiles. For example, A A, A B, B A, B B, all four are Nash equilibria because uh, from each of the profiles if 
any player deviates and takes some other action that player cannot be better off. But what about the symmetric Nash equilibrium? Well, by applying this criterion that we have just said, there are only two symmetric Nash equilibria, this and this. Thank you.